Hi, and welcome to The Hot Seat. I am Josephine Moon, and I am lucky enough to be sitting here today with author Emma Gray from Canberra, and she's here to tell us about her new book. Welcome, Emma. Thanks, Josephine. It's lovely to be here. It's so lovely to have you here. Would you like to start by telling us all a little bit about your beautiful new book? Thank you. Um, I've got a copy of oh, an advanced review copy here to show you. It's called The Last Love Note. And uh, it's a book that I wrote, um, sadly, from personal experience. It's a book about a midlife widow. She's 38 at the start of the book. Um, and it's a story about her, the loss of her husband, um, which is something that I've experienced in my own life as well. And then also in tandem, the story of her falling in love again. Um, so it's a, a, an uplifting romantic comedy that sort of plunges into a lot of deep grief and, and really difficult emotions as well. It's a beautiful premise and you, you have such a beautiful and easy writing style that really draws people in. So uh, I'm sure people are going to love it. Do you want to tell us about your memories of what's your sort of earliest moment of when you knew you wanted to be a writer? I have got a really clear memory of that moment, actually. It was it, it was when I was 14 and it was a summer holidays, probably about this time of year. I had, um, we were up in uh, Bangalore, which is near Lismore, where my family comes from and having Christmas. And then my aunt and a couple of aunts, actually, and our mum introduced my sister and I to Anne of Green Gables. And we watched that Kevin Sullivan production of Anne and and just fell in love with it. But I remember really relating to Anne as a writer throughout that. And then I had a notebook and pen that I spent all summer sort of scribbling this really truly terrible attempt at a novel and, and just noticing that my sister had no such aspiration and wasn't going to spend her entire summer sitting there trying to write. And I think it was then that I realised this is actually this drive to tell stories and to escape into a fantasy world that not everybody experiences. I love that. And Anne, I, Anne of Green Gables is such a such an important character in so many writers' development too. It's really yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, and so what about the moment you realised you wanted to write this book? Because I think writers always have lots of, you know, ideas and we don't necessarily get to write them all. So when did you know that this book had to be written? Well, I I lost my husband, Jeff, in 2016. And as a writer, I knew that writing in some form was going to be my coping mechanism and my way through this deep grief that I was plunged into. And at first, I didn't know what form that might take. It might be, you know, a memoir or it could be a nonfiction book about grief and finally, it took a couple of years, but I finally settled on the idea of fictionalising the story. And I'm so glad I did because it meant that I could project all of this true emotion onto a character that was just one step removed from my own experience and my own life. And, and then it took about three years then to write the book because I think I also needed to be going through what she was going through almost in real time. Um, there are some sections that I've dropped into the book in later in later sort of moments that that have improved the book, I think, that I just wouldn't have known to to write about had I tried to churn it out a bit earlier on. So it was very much a cathartic experience for me to write on this topic, but also something that's full of a lot of hope and um, just a lot of a lot of romance and and also comedy, which um, may seem strange in a book about grief. Uh, I, I love that. I think it's beautiful because I think grief does encompass the full spectrum of emotion yeah. because yeah. It, it hits us from, on so many different levels and from so many different memories. Yeah, mm. yeah mm. I, love, I love that. It's beautiful. So when you're writing, do you have any particular rituals or things you have to do to get yourself in the zone to write? I think I would say that I'm... A binge writer so I wish I could report that I have a really you know a, a good routine and that I sit down every day at a certain time with a cup of tea and start writing but it tends to be more that once I am taken away by a story I just sit down and it just pours out of me over a few weeks the first the first draft um, I think I wrote the first draft of this book in about 
five or six weeks at ridiculous times, you know, two in the morning, or it's not sustainable. <laughs> but um, it, it tends to be like that for the first draft, uh, a bit of a binge. And and then the editing, of course, is a separate a separate thing. And that feels a little bit more like a, a proper job and sitting down and, and doing the work during the day. Um, so I guess the only other ritual I have or a little technique is that I tend to, if I do have the luxury of a full day where I can write, and I don't always because I'm also doing a, you know, a few other things, um, I will follow the sun through the house. So I might start on the veranda out the front in the morning and then when the sun goes overhead, I'll move out to the, the family room and I might end up outside out in the backyard. And it's, um, it's just, an, it's, I think it's nice to move around um, during the day too. I love that. I've never heard anyone um, anyone else say that they do that. I think it's really beautiful, mm. like, you know, like a little sunflower following the sun. That's yeah. Really <laughs> um, what is the one book you've ever read that you thought, wow, I wish I'd written that book? Uh, I find this question so ch challenging. It's a great question. Um, and I was thinking it's not even one book, although there have certainly been books I've read and I've thought, Oh gosh, that's brilliant. I wish I could have written that. Um, but it's it's usually things like a sentence in somebody's book where I'll just read it and then it'll take my breath away and I'll put the book down and have to think about it and read it again and underline it or, or you know, write it down somewhere in a journal. Um, because I just think that is a breathtaking piece of writing and um I'm just full of admiration for for writers when they can have that impact. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I often, um, I listen to most of my books on audio and I frequently mm. am just like, oh, wow, that, that sentence is just brilliant. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's really great. It's yeah. fun. I love that. And how do you want your readers to feel when they get to the end of this book? Um, I kind of want them to feel as though they have just emerged from a movie theatre having watched a Richard Curtis rom-com and they have mascara pouring down their cheeks and they're sobbing and they can't be seen in public, race straight into the bathroom to regroup after reading it. I think it's that kind of vibe. But I want them to feel happy and elated, um, but it's a very hard one, happy ending. So they'll have really experienced all of the emotions. Oh, that sounds amazing. And I, yeah, I can just see it. I can see them coming out of the cinema. <laughs> <laughs> um so on that note then, who would you cast to play your main characters? Oh, well, I've been so lucky in that um, the beautiful actor Leanna Walsman has recorded the audio book and I now can't get her voice out of my head because I think she's done such a, an exquisite job with it. So she, um, in my head now, I can't think of anyone else who um, would be better to play the role of Kate. And then... For the role of Hugh, I can't go past because my heart absolutely broke when Patrick died in Offspring, <laughs> um, which then my own life sort of then imitated about a year later and, and you know, it was just awful. Um, I, I have, I always have Matt Lenevez in, in mind when I think of, of Hugh in the book, so I can see the two of them together. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Oh, yes, and I think the whole country was devastated. Devastated, okay. yeah. Yeah. Um, and so what are you currently reading and what are you currently working on? I'm currently reading a manuscript, actually, that my friend has written. She's an amazing writer, Rachel Morgan, and she's written a book called The Scoop. Um, she's written several books. I can barely keep up with her productivity. She's just, she's just incredible. Um, so I'm having a read of that over the Christmas break. And um, I'm currently writing a new book. Um, and, and I'm one of these pantsters who, who just, you know, writes it as, it as I go along. I discover the story. So um, when people ask what the plot is, I find it very hard to, to say until it's been written. <laughs> But it's um it's a book with a slightly younger protagonist and um again a, a parallel story between her life now and and her 
um, first love, her high school, her high school love. I've got a, a couple of young adult fiction books that I've written previously. So I'm returning a little bit to that younger protagonist for the next one, which is a lot of fun. I've got a 24 year old and a 22 year old. Um, and I feel like I grow up with them as a writer and where whatever age they are, I find it easier to write about. So that's yeah. the next one. Well, that all sounds amazing. I am sure we're all going to be reading not just this current book of yours, but lots more to come. And I'm really looking forward to them. So thank you oh, so much for joining us. So. And oh, I, pleasure. I wish this book all the success. I'm sure oh, thank you. Well. Thanks. I really appreciate it. No worries. Thanks so much for joining us.